Okay, it's cold. I need a coffee if I'm going outside. We gotta talk. guy they put in charge of placing benches got fired <laughs> that's right folks he's back in marble falls why why oh why I'll tell you, it hasn't been easy. I have been all over the place. And it seemed like my whole winter was gonna be spent in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That is what I wanted. That's what I felt like needed to happen. But par for the course, so much has happened in this last three months that there's just no way I could have predicted. I like to feel and put across that maybe I'm in a little bit of control of my life and, and I know kind of what I'm doing, but I've proven different. I've actually driven as many miles as I thought I would drive in a six month period of time and less than three. Hey, it's me again. So yeah, I'm here in Marble Falls again. The last place that I thought I would end up. I'm here for a number of reasons here because things did not go the way I planned. Though Wilhelmina has performed perfectly, she's been great. I have gone across the country. I started out in Texas, as you know, I closed my business and I drove um, through New Mexico and Arizona and to California, to Northern California, Monterey. I spent some time in Monterey on those beaches. Went up and spent a week or two in my brother's place brother-in-law who has the brain cancer at my sister's place. My mom is actually there now. She's been there for over two weeks helping, doing what she can. My brother-in-law is now in hospice at home and he's not well. It's been a lot for the whole family. Everyone's given all they can to be with him, to help him. He can't do anything himself. He's got to be lifted picked up. When I was in Idaho Falls, I did all I can. I did all I could to help him. I lifted him up with all my strength. I'm a 200 pound man. We put him where he had to be, whether it was the toilet, the shower, in his bed, on the chair. Fed him. The whole bit. We did everything we could. And, um, it just got to the point where I was broken. My right arm was already bad from falling on it. My right arm had been injured before, so my, both of my shoulders were completely out of it. And then my knee had been hurt in the van, but as I was lifting him up, one of the last days that I could, my knee popped and I felt it and hurt it. And I was limping like a cripple. I was on track, man. I was on track. I was doing it. I was so strong and feeling great and just was moving my body and eating right. And I was doing the fasting. I was doing everything. And I still have that in my mind and my heart. Just circumstances. Got the call from my sister and she said, please, can you come to Idaho Falls? We need your help. Everyone's gone. We need your help moving Mark around. So I went there. I was there for eight days. 
much than I thought I could handle. I didn't think I was going to be able to handle being in that clinic for so long. Just not good with hospitals and places. But uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it. I handled it for eight days. I did what I had to do. Thank God for the strength and the grace to get through that. It was very hard on me. Mentally, physically, emotionally. I didn't realize how hard it was until I went back to Coeur d'Alene and spent another week there. No, actually, Idaho Falls was... Um, right after Idaho Falls, I was just bewildered. I was... There was... I can't even think of the words. I didn't feel like I was making... I didn't know what decisions to make. I was kind of confused and lost and in a emotional place. And so I came all the way back to Texas to get my front seat. Why would I do that? I needed my front seat. I gotta get the front seat, put the front seat back in. I just felt like when I was in Idaho Falls, I couldn't help in a way that I really wanted to, which is take my brother around. They were struggling for rides back and forth to the clinic, to the place we were staying. And I didn't have a front seat and we couldn't get Mark in and out of the back of Wilhelmina. So the truth is that I felt kind of just inadequate in helping him. I did all I could with my strength and lifting him up and doing all the things to move him around and take care of him. But I couldn't drive him around. And I really just wanted to put him in the front and take him for drive sometimes. Just get him out of the house. I had no front seat. And so I realized how important the front seat was to me when I went back to Coeur d'Alene from Boise. And my buddy Mark also has a neuropathy in his back and it makes his feet numb so he can't walk very well. But we had gone several places when I was there for weeks and he couldn't hardly get into the back and out of the back. And what ended up happening is I thought, I need the front seat. I need Wilhelmina's front seat. I can't do anything. It seems like I want to be with people. I want to have community and say, hey, come on, let's go for a cruiser. And I couldn't. I didn't realize what a big deal that would be. And so from Idaho Falls, I just went ahead and took the trip back to Texas. And when I was here, I pretty much had a three or four day, five day turnaround and I head back to, to uh, Coeur d'Alene. And you guys saw the video of Wilhelmina found her, decided on her winter playground. Yes, I had every intention of staying in Coeur d'Alene for the winter. Ultimately, my love for driving put me in a hole. <laughs> um, and I just didn't drive because I wanted to drive, drive, drive. I drove. After Idaho Falls, I drove all the way back to Texas, all the way back to Texas. And from Texas, I drove all the way back to Coeur d'Alene. And some things happened in Coeur d'Alene that just got me. And I said, what am I doing? Am I really gonna spend the whole winter here in this freezing weather and uh, dealing with some things? that I have, was having to deal with there and with the barbershops all being so lazy, like so slow. I just really didn't know if I could even make a living there. At this point, I needed to make a living. So all I knew is what I know. And Texas is a very good economy and barbershops here are just busy. They're just busy, busy. And, uh, so you know my you know that my uh, heart is to be a full-time youtuber i've worked really hard through a lot of emotions a lot of things happening including my brother-in-law still struggling and i haven't seen him since idaho falls he's got to see the video i made for him he said he was going to watch it over and over i guess he watched it like 10 or more times and he loved it i'm so happy for that I, was, I came back to Coeur d'Alene and I just couldn't do it. And I have to make this choice because 
you know, not everybody can handle the snow and I think I could handle it, but I just was thinking, you know what? I have a short, short window. I had a short window to go and get there before the snow and even a shorter window to decide whether or not I was actually going to stay. And I went out and looked at all the barber shops and I was just not convinced that I could do anything. So I came back to Texas and I had a bunch of snow in the mountains. It was scary. It was scary. I was, I was tripping hard because I thought, wow, I'm going to miss it. And I did it. I totally hit a ton of snow in the mountain, Montana and up towards Moab and not Montana, um, Utah. You know, my heart is true. I started here. I wanted to make this last three months just work for me, work for the YouTube, do all kind of content. But if I felt like in every aspect and at every turn, I was hit by something else. It was like something was fighting against me to actually follow through and get to a good place where I was making consistent um, content, where I was being creative, where I was feeling good. I never got to that. I felt like I was seeing all the people that I've not seen in 25, 30 years. And I got to see all my friends and even my, met my niece for the first time. And that was good, it was good. I had a good time and I loved it. But it just seemed like once I had that, you know, all done. I just couldn't figure out what, it, what was next. And then the whole thing with my brother-in-law happened. So suddenly, all of a sudden I was in Idaho Falls, just serving, being of some kind of help to him. And it cost me a lot of money and gas to go all those places. None of these places going back and forth from Texas to Coeur d'Alene was not on the agenda. Going to Idaho Falls was not on the agenda, hurting myself not it all happened and I do it again to help my brother and now I end up back in Texas and I have a lot of questions I'm asking myself do I keep going I don't have the money to keep going I'm not completely broke but I need to be somewhere I can work and then I got a message from somebody somebody really wise that said hey trust the lord you know put together some kind of a thing you know tell people about your venmo and your paypal and your cash app and i actually had created a ko-fi which is sort of like patreon but they allow you to keep all your money and it's linked to paypal so i can access it i don't really want to talk about fundraising on my channel I do want you to know that we're almost to 700 my plan this year was to get monetized at a thousand with 4,000 watch hours in a one-year period of time and I think we could do it it's gonna take some doing I'm gonna have to if I go somewhere every step of the way is gonna be trusting God if I drive somewhere else every step of the way is gonna be trusting that another tank gas can be bought that another bag of salad <laughs> which I'm trying to change my diet to um, lots of vegetables and fruit I gotta trust God I gotta trust that uh, this was him telling me to do it that's not easy but the faith parts easy taking that step of faith, like getting out there and doing it, knowing that you're, you know, what's up, what happens if, you know? But like one of my old videos said, what if it all works out? What if everything works out? What if I put myself out there and it just all works out? And in the future, I'm just saying, man, do you remember? Do you remember when I was just practically broke and didn't think I could keep going, but I did. And everybody came through and the channel grew. And we got better at this. And now I'm full-time, full-time YouTuber. I love to drive. I warn you guys, I love to 
drive. So if I'm back out there and affording it, my kind of van life is seeing all the cities and going to all the beaches and checking out the rivers, the rushing rivers and the beauty, like that kind of beauty. That's the kind of stuff I love. It takes gas to do that. And the prices of gas nowadays are ridiculous. Anyway, to wrap this up, I, I just am astounded by the growth of the channel. Even when I wasn't doing anything, I was seeing numbers come up and we're almost at 700. I'm 300 away from the thousand that I need to be monetized. I'm getting lots of views. I believe that we're very close to 4,000 hours in a, in a year period of time. And so that's a big step. But I know from watching a lot of think media and channels that teach how to do YouTube that uh, being monetized is not the only way to uh, do well on YouTube. So I'm good. I think that uh, I'm undecided still on where to go, what to do. But my heart is definitely excited and I'm definitely in faith for the future. I can only do what I can do, you know? And uh, but y'all know me, I'm, if you've watched my stuff, it's, it's getting better. I'm excited about it. I just hate thinking about money and I definitely hate talking about it. I never want to do that. Just know that my description has some things, some links in it. And uh, in the future, you might see a Ko-Fi button pop up on the screen or any places. And uh, I do appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for hanging in there. It's been like two weeks in my last video. And um, I knew it. I was like, what am I going to say? Thank you so much for hanging in there over the last couple weeks that I've been MIA. I've thought about you guys every day. I've thought about making videos. My mind, my heart, my emotions weren't there. I'm still struggling about my bro-in-law like to see him hopefully not for the last time but my mom is going to stay out there for as long as it takes to support my sister and to be there for her she's making food and cleaning the kitchen and doing what she can and I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to go there I've actually thought about going to Quartzsite and hanging out there in the desert for a little while perfect weather doing some content out there in the beautiful desert meeting some people that would be awesome there's a whole lot of van lifers and RVers out there that'd be so cool just to hang out just just hang out <laughs> wouldn't that be great but decisions have to be made in the next couple days I'm gonna make probably a couple videos here this being the first of those and I uh, just want to say God bless you guys so much I mean man, almost 700 almost 700 that is so cool i started here in this town it's not a whole lot different but i started here and the dream has remained the same but now i'm back here for a short period of time trying to figure out what i'm going to do i do appreciate it thanks for liking the video and showing the care by uh, commenting I love it that so many of you are commenting or communicating through the comment section. It's just so fantastic. Go check out my Ko-Fi for nothing else, just to see where it's starting at. You know, the future holds some awesome stuff. I'm a creative guy, I love making stuff. And in the past, I've had a t-shirt sticker company. I would love to do that for this channel and uh, create some, some cool man life. Overland type of stuff. That'd be great. Anyway, thanks again. I hope to see you very soon. Do all the good things.